Today we're going to be talking about how to find the area under one arc of the parametric curve. And in this particular problem, we've given the parametric curve defined as x equals r times theta minus d sine theta and y equals r minus d cosine theta. The variable here is theta and r and d are constants. The area formula we're going to need to use is area equals the integral from alpha to beta of g of t times f prime of t dt. This area formula specifically gives you the area under one arc or in one loop of the parametric curve. And as a reminder, we have a double angle formula that we're going to need to use a little bit later. The first thing we need to realize is that our formula is defined in terms of t. We have g of t, f prime of t, and d of t. Our parametric curve is defined for x and y in terms of theta. So essentially we want to convert our formula into a more recognizable form based on the type of problem that we have. So instead of g of t, we actually have y of theta. And then instead of f prime of t, we have x prime of theta, and then dt becomes d theta. Now we're looking at variables that actually match our problem. So as you can see from the formula here, the first thing that we need to do is find the derivative of x, which is going to be dx over d theta. We'll just be able to plug y directly into the formula, but we need the derivative of x. So in order to do that, we'll take the derivative, we'll get dx over d theta is equal to, and remember r and d are constants, so when we take the derivative of r theta, we'll just get r. When we take the derivative of negative d sine theta, the negative d will stay here as a constant coefficient. The derivative of sine of theta is cosine of theta, so we get negative d cosine theta, which you'll notice is exactly the same as our equation here for y. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and plug into our area formula. Our limits of integration are almost always going to be 0 and 2 pi. So we have our limits of integration, and then we have y of theta, which we know is r minus d cosine theta. Then we have x prime of theta, or the derivative of x with respect to theta, and that's also going to be r minus d cosine theta. We just found that. And then we have d theta. Now we just need to simplify the integral. So we'll expand, we'll foil out what we've got inside here. We'll get r squared minus rd cosine theta minus rd cosine theta is a minus 2rd cosine theta. And then negative d cos theta times negative d cos theta gives us a positive d squared cosine squared of theta d theta. Now the first two terms are really easy to integrate. The last one, this d squared cosine squared theta, we're going to have to use our double angle formula for. But these first two we can go ahead and pull outside of the integral. We can, we can integrate those. So the integral of r squared just becomes r squared theta. The integral of negative 2rd cosine theta, the negative 2rd stays as a constant coefficient. The integral of cosine of theta is sine of theta, so we just get negative 2rd sine of theta, and we're going to be evaluating all of that on the interval 0 to 2 pi. Then we have plus, still our last term here, the integral from 0 to 2 pi of d squared cosine squared theta. Well, the first thing that we can do is pull the d squared out in front here because d squared is a constant, so we'll get plus d squared. Then we just have cosine squared of theta d theta left inside our integral, and we can make a substitution directly for cosine squared of theta. What we'll get is 1 half times cosine of 2 theta plus 1 d theta. Now we can do a bunch of things here. We'll go ahead and evaluate these first two terms on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So we'll plug in our upper limit of integration first, 2 pi. When we do that, we'll get 2 pi r squared minus sine of 2 pi is 0. So that whole term there goes away. Then we're going to subtract whatever we get when we plug in our lower limit of integration. When we plug in 0 to our first term here, we'll get 0. When we plug in 0 to our second term here, sine of 0 is 0, so that all becomes 0. So the result of this whole first part here is just 2 pi r squared, which we got when we plugged 2 pi into r squared theta. 
So that's our first part. And then we have here our integral. So this becomes plus. We can pull the 1 half out in front and we'll get d squared over 2. We have that d squared now over 2. And all that's left is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine of 2 theta plus 1 d theta. And now since we don't have any higher degree trigonometric identities, we can just evaluate the integral, the remaining integral. So we'll get area equals 2 pi r squared plus d squared over 2 times. Now when we take the integral of cosine of 2 theta, the integral of cosine is sine, so we'll get sine of 2 theta. But then according to chain rule, we have to divide by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is 2 theta. The derivative of that is 2, so we have to divide by 2, and that's the same as multiplying by 1 half out in front there. And then the integral of 1 is just theta, so we get plus theta, and we'll be evaluating that from 0 to 2 pi. So when we do that, 2 pi r squared plus d squared over 2 times, when we plug in 2 pi here, sine of 2 pi is 0, and then when we plug it in here, we just get 2 pi. Then we'll subtract whatever we get when we plug in 0, but sine of 0 is 0, and obviously we're going to get 0 for this term, so there's nothing to add there, it's just 0. Our result then is 2 pi r squared plus pi d squared, because our 2's here cancel, so we're just left with pi d squared, and that's it. This is the area under one arc of the parametric curve defined by these two parametric equations. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.